So going back to causes of B1 deficiency, we mentioned alcohol, tea, coffee, energy drinks, caffeine can do it as well, seizure medications, diuretics used to lower blood pressure. So if you're on Lasix or furosemide or hydrochlorothiazide, these are all drugs that, you know, that, that deplete water uh, to lower blood pressure have a tremendous impact on thiamine status. As a matter of fact, hydrochlorothiazide, oftentimes abbreviated as HCTZ, it reduces thiamine uptake into cardiac cells, into your heart cells. This is one of the mechanisms of congestive heart failure. Um, done been a number of studies where uh, doctors have looked at patients in hospitals on, um, on, on uh, in hospitals because of congestive heart failure who were taking multiple di types of diuretics uh, and they found high proliferation or not proliferation, a high prevalence of thiamine deficiency in these patients and that when you supplement them with thiamine, in many cases their congestive heart failure improves. Their, what's called their ejection fraction uh, improves. You see a thiamine deficiency in congestive heart failure, patients receiving long-term furosemide, this is a diuretic, furosemide therapy, it's a type of diuretic for blood pressure. And you can see here biochemical evidence of severe thiamine deficiency was found in 98%. This was a, a 24 out of the 25 patients being studied when they were receiving 80 milligrams a day of furosemide. So look at your dose. If you're on furosemide, look at your medicine, look at your dose. If you're on 80, taking thiamine, vitamin B1, probably a pretty good idea for you. Even better yet, go ask your doctor to measure your thiamine status. And we'll talk more about how you can measure and what tests you can ask for to get thiamine measured here shortly. Um, so we know the drugs cause the depletion. Here's another case in the elderly, diuretic use, uh, a risk for subclinical thiamine deficiency in elderly patients. Vitamin B1 nurture worsened during the hospitalization and in a multivariate procedure, the only significant predictor of the change in the vitamin B1 nutriture was the use of diuretics. So in the hospital, when they were pumping people full of these diuretics, their vitamin B1 status deteriorated and they were able to prove that definitively with a p-value of less than 0 0.001, which is phenomenally uh, We'll just say it's, 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 it's extremely accurate. When you have a p-value of anything really less than 0.05, it, it means that the likelihood that there's causation is extremely high. So the changes in the ETK, erythrocyte transketolase, transketolase activity in whole blood, this is one of the tests, ETK is one of the tests you can ask for, sometimes referred to as ETKA. So it's erythrocyte transketolase uh, um, Erythrocyte transketolase activity coefficient is what, is what that refers to. And so it's a test that measures for the functionality of a particular thiamine dependent or vitamin B1 dependent enzyme. Um, and so this ETK activity or coefficient during the hospital stay was one of the things they were assessing thiamine status with. So in this case, our data suggests that hospitalized elderly at an increased risk, again, as you're hospitalized elderly, increased risk for vitamin B1 deficiency, especially when on diuretic treatments. So if you've been hospitalized and been pumped full of diuretics, you should be asking for thiamine as well. Um, it's very well documented. I've just shown you a couple of studies, but this has been documented for decades. This is something we've known about for a very long time. And you, know, you should demand better care. If you're being loaded up with diuretics, you definitely want to consider vitamin B1 to offset that if a diuretic is something that you absolutely have to take. You see a conclusion here, thiamine supplementation prevent the development of a subclinical wet beriberi in older subjects on diuretics. What is wet beriberi? Wet beriberi is congestive heart failure in disguise. In other words, a lot of times these patients, they have a history of cardiovascular risks and so the doctors assume 
that uh, when they develop congestive heart failure, the doctors just, oh, you just, it's heart disease. You have heart disease. They make no notion or notation about the fact that you might have developed this heart disease as a result of decades of diuretic use, causing your vitamin B1 status to deplete to such a great degree that your heart is no longer to produce energy adequately and pump effectively, and so it's failing. Vitamin B1 deficiency can cause that, so be aware. It's a, it's a mimicker. Vitamin B1 deficiency can cause a lot of different kinds of diseases that doctors dismiss and don't associate with the vitamin B1. And this last one, I've talked about this a few times, so metformin is a substrate inhibitor of the human thiamine transporter. So it blocks it. And if you look at this diagram over here, you've got the human thiamine transporter here inside of an intestinal cell. And what happens is you've got thiamine trying to come in and you've got metformin blocking that from occurring. And so this is in your intestines, folks. So this is the, you think about it as These, this, this is the lumen or the tube of your intestine. This is one side over here. This is the side over here. So imagine, you know, if we, if we draw this out, it forms the tube of the intestine. And so food's coming through, right? You're taking the drug. The drug blocks the uptake by these cells uh, to get that thiamine across. And so remember, your blood's on the other side. How do you get that B1 into your blood if it's being blocked by the drug you're taking to control your blood sugar? And remember that B1 is necessary to help you take blood sugar glucose and convert it into energy. And so if you're taking a drug because your glucose is too high, you're taking a drug to improve your glucose utilization and you're blocking vitamin B1 and you can't get energy from the glucose that you're consuming and you get stuck and that's when you get tired. But we also know that one of the side effects in diabetics chronically suffer with or develop neuropathy. And neuropathy oftentimes is blamed on the diabetes. You say sugar neuropathy is glucose elevations trigger the neuropathy, but is it the glucose causing the damage to the nerves or is it the vitamin B1 deficiency that's occurring? Because you need vitamin B1 for the nerves to function. Vitamin B1 deficiency, one of the known side effects is neuropathy, polyneuropathy. So metformin blocks uptake of this vitamin. Metformin also blocks, and it's important to say it blocks vitamin B12, it blocks folate, and it blocks CoQ10. And these three other nutrients can also, when these are deficient, can also contribute to neuropathy. So you've got B1 deficiency, B12, folate, CoQ10 deficiency, all can be induced by metformin as a medication. It's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan. There's so many doctors out there, especially on YouTube, talking about metformin as a longevity drug. It's like, take metformin on purpose to supposedly improve your lifespan, but it's depleting these very critical nutrients that can lead to a multitude of different types of problems and side effects.